Okay, we've come to our last set of rosette positions. Unlike the last set, you'll notice the kings are opposite to each other here. These are opposite rosettes. And in this case, the layout of the pieces is very much like a third rank defense. In fact, if white played there, this is exactly the third rank kind of position. Okay, so I call that a third rank, an opposite third rank rosette. In this case, um, the simplest approach for the attacker is to give this check, which is very likely to lead the attacking pieces to reunite one way or another, because moving the opposite direction up the board creates a, a large risk of losing the rook to a fork. So if that, it's very simple to play this check. And if the king falls back like so, you form the thorn. Uh, as I hope you're starting to see, this course of study is all about moving from one known position type to another. If you can make a rosette, do it. If you can make a thorn, do it. Uh, black can also do that rather peculiar move. Again, you apply a simple attacking rule. If the rook is hanging and you can attack it with your king, it's usually the best thing to do. Okay, so the pieces reunite. Okay, it's almost always good to pin the rook to restrict freedom of movement. And he goes there. And that's now safe. He's going to go there and we have a cage off the edge of the board. So the check from c5 is not possible because the rook would go lost. Um, I'm not sure what the defender would do. Falling back to d6 would be reasonable. Um, king move to d6 also looks like it's probably reasonable. All right, so let's go back here. So we have king c5. We have a natural looking check. Form a thorn. It's back up two moves. If instead uh, there attack the hanging rook. The defender reunites the pieces. A pin is almost never bad. And step forward, and you've got a cage off the edge of the board. Uh, both sides are using our benchmark positions to guide their play. We've reflected the position and moved it away from the center of the board. The same procedure still applies. Go ahead and give this check. Uh, we have a cage of sorts. We have the checking square for the rook controlled by both pieces. So he comes over here. You're seeing the similarities to a third rank here. Uh, the rook is now dominated. It has no safe square to go to on the fifth rank here. Um, a5 and b5, immediately it goes lost to a fork from c7 and d7. Uh, and every other square is currently directly controlled. Uh, so he... So you simply attack it, and it's got to give up its cutoff defense. Now you can walk forward, take this check, and we have the absolute seventh extension kind of position um, with the checking square on g6 controlled by both pieces. Uh, this is the only safe move. So skewer the king to the rook to restrict the options. We're in a trapezoid position. We can now convert that. So now black has the move, and in the trapezoid position, the rook is now lost. And we've reflected and rotated again, and it's still got the look and feel of a third rank defense. The queen's here taking away this square. The rook is cutting off the king from approaching. It's got that same kind of feel to it. So the attacker uses our same program again. Check there. King falls back. Okay to bring the king there. And we've got an absolute seventh position. The rook can't come off the edge of the board safely. Uh, if he does, if he uh, does something foolish like that, and this is the triple threat position. So if he uh, walks over here, the rook is immediately lost. 
if he walks over here, we have the triple threat. So that check, and now there are two mates on the board there and there, and the only way to prevent mate is immediately to sacrifice the rook on d8. So again, as, as I get more of these up here on uh, YouTube, you're seeing how these different position types become a repertoire that you convert one to the other in order to win this endgame. And it still remains a lot easier to defend the rosette than it is to attack. It's easier to defend the whole ending than it is to attack. And here's the first consideration when you're attacking an opposite third rank rosette. Don't use our standard procedure if it actually forces black toward the center. So get back here. If you're actually pushing him toward the center, that's not good. So don't do that. See, I mean, um, this just lost a lot of time for white. So when our normal check here is only going to force him toward the center, that's when the black king is in this area, then it's better to apply a general rule, attack a hanging rook. He'll fall back here. That's a reasonable thing to do. Go ahead and pin him to the rook, skewer it, uh, so as to restrict the options. As you might guess, now both pieces are in the center of the board. Um, White had a tough time with our original position anyway. You know, what can you do? Now we're threatening a fork there, um, a move over here, um, and he loses the rook to a fork there, so f5 is now off limits for the defending rook. So he has to go there. Uh, I trust you see that if he goes there, we've just created the absolute seventh extension, and he has to ignominiously march all the way over to the A file. So that is a better defense. Okay, attack the hanging rook. He can't check from e5. So he's got to go over there, check him. Um, e6 is um, risky in this case. <coughs> okay, and again, absolute seventh extension. His only prudent move is rook h5. So let's walk down that again when your standard move, queen g6 check, would actually push the opposing king into the center of the board, uh, it's better to just go ahead and attack the hanging rook. Oh, I'm having trouble here. Okay, attack the hanging rook. It'll fall back. That's a reasonable attack. Just so you know, this is also a reasonable attack. Either way, he's going to get both his pieces into the center of the board, and it's difficult.